Good morning. I am Dr. Monika Ramasamy, junior resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis, BGGMC and Sasun General Hospital, Pune. I will be presenting a paper on the topic of role of sonography in accurately diagnosing non-traumatic acute abdominal pathologies. Aim and objectives to analyze the sonographic findings in patients presenting to emergency unit with non-traumatic abdominal pain and to study the diagnostic accuracy of ultrasound. Objectives, evaluation of acute abdominal pathologies involving male and female population like appendicitis, perforation, malignancies and other miscellaneous conditions. Assessing the role of ultrasound in detailed evaluation of disease process, thereby enhancing the diagnostic accuracy for initial diagnosis and for the line of management. Correlating acquired results with multi-detector CT diagnosis or post-operative or clinical findings. Introduction. Acute abdomen is a medical emergency in which there is sudden and severe pain in abdomen. Its causes can range from benign and self-limiting disease to a surgical emergency. Abdominal pain can be classified as visceral, somatoparietal or referred pain that can be a manifestation of a wide array of systemic and local causes. More common causes are cholecystitis, acute appendicitis, bowel obstruction, visceral perforation, mesenteric ischemia, and ischemic colitis. Today, the use of multi-detector computer tomography has revolutionized the clinical approach to these conditions. However, ultrasonography remains the primary imaging technique in majority of cases, especially in young and female patients when the limitation of Radiation exposure is there and in rural areas where access to multi-detector CT is not available. The lower cost and in particular the lack of radiation ex exposure are the most important advantages of ultrasound compared to CT. Furthermore, ultrasound is a real-time dynamic examination and this characteristic conveys dynamic information about bowel motility and changes in position and to depict blood flow. Advantages of ultrasound examination is the possibility to correlate the ultrasound findings with the point of maximal tenderness. The most common ultrasound technique used to examine patients with acute abdominal pain is the graded compression procedure. Another example of dynamic examination is the evaluation of bowel hernias, mesentery, and omentum through the Valsalva maneuver. Color and power Doppler imaging supplement the information provided by grayscale imaging with increased vascularity visualized in a number of inflammatory, infectious or neoplastic diseases. Finally, TVS imaging, transvaginal imaging could be very useful in the evaluation of abdominal pain from gynecological causes and it could also be useful for evaluation of deeply positioned appendix, terminal ileitis, sigmoid or rectal inflammation. However, ultrasound is very operator dependent. Quality of ultrasound imaging and diagnosis is influenced greatly by the experience of the examiner. Methodology, study design, descriptive observational study, place of study. The study was carried out in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, Sassoon General Hospital, Pune from October 2023 to December 2023. Population study. Inclusion criteria, all adult patients with complaints of abdominal pain presenting to emergency unit were included in the study. Exclusion criteria, patients with history of trauma and unstable patients in hypotensive shock. Sample size estimation, a total of 100 patients, that is 50 male and 50 female, underwent transabdominal and transvaginal sonography at Department of Radio Diagnosis. Instrumentation, Philips Affinity 70 ultrasound machine, Comparison was done between USG and post-operative findings. All the 100 admitted patients were examined by the clinician and provisional clinical diagnosis was made by the information obtained from the clinical history and physical examination. Simultaneously, routine laboratory investigations were carried out. Following this, all the patients were examined using sonography with the adequate bowel preparation. With correlation of clinical history, physical findings, and ultrasonographic findings, ultrasonographic diagnosis was made. In few patients with discrepancy between clinical and sonographic imaging features, CT and MRI was done to confirm the diagnosis. Final diagnosis was confirmed with post-surgery and histopathology in few cases. Images of few cases 
diagnosed on ultrasound. Case 1 of ruptured tubal ectopic pregnancy. Complex cystic structure was noted which showed increased peripheral vascularity giving ring of fire appearance in on transvaginal sonography. Free fluid was seen in pouch of Douglas which showed multiple mobile echoes within suggestive of hemoperitoneum. Second image shows case of ovarian torsion. It shows a complex ovarian cyst in ovary with absent internal and peripheral vascularity on putting color doppler. In both cases, patients were operated based on the sonography report and diagnosis was confirmed postoperatively. Case 3. Case of obstructive hemivagina and ipsilateral renal agenesis, ovira syndrome. Patient had, diagno had uh, diagnosed with biconvate uterus and hematometra in one horn with ipsilateral absent renal kidney. The image shows a transvaginal axial section with um, a hematometra on one horn and normal other horn of uterus. Finding was confirmed after doing MRI and postoperatively. Case 4 shows a case of adnexal mass. A heterogeneous lesion was seen on transvaginal sonography adjacent to the uterus from which ovary was not separately visualized. It was diagnosed to be ovarian neoplasm. Post-surgical resection, diagnosis of ovarian carcinoma was confirmed with biopsy. Case 5, a case of acute appendicitis. A peristaltic, non-compressible, blind-ending tubular structure was seen in our right iliac fossa region with thick wall suggesting inflamed appendix. Surrounding subcentimetric lymph nodes and ecogenic mesentery were seen suggesting acute inflammatory changes. Case 5. Case of acute enteritis. Small bubble loops showed thickening and thickened and edematous walls. Bubble loops contained a tubular, thick-walled, worm-like structure within the lumen which was mobile with dynamic ultrasound. On stool microscopy, ascariasis worm infestation was confirmed. The sonography image shows bubble lumen with worm inside. Observation Of the 50 male patients that we study, most of them were diagnosed with pancreatitis. Around 13 were diagnosed with pancreatitis. 11 were diagnosed with appendicitis. 8 patients were had renal calculus. 9 patients were diagnosed as cholelithiasis. Three had neoplasm, two were diagnosed with obstruction, two patients were diagnosed with mesenteric lymphadenitis, and one patient had liver abscess and one was diagnosed with perforation on sonography. Of the 50 female patients who were diagnosed, the most common cause was pelvic pathology, which was seen in 14 female patients. Six of them had diagnosed with appendicitis and six of them had neoplasm. Seven had renal calculi. Four patients had tubercular enteritis, five had cholelithiasis, and two patients had pancreatitis and liver abscess. Four of them had miscellaneous diagnosis. In common, uh, of the 100 patients studied, pancreatitis was diagnosed in 15 patients, of which 13 were male and 2 were female. Appendicitis was diagnosed in 17 patients, of which 11 were male and 6 were female. Cholelithiasis was diagnosed in 14 patients, of which 9 were male, 5 were female. Renal calculus was diagnosed in 15 patients, of which 8 were male and 7 were female. Liver abscess was diagnosed in 3 patients, in which 1 was male and 2 were female. Mesenteric lymphadenitis and bowel pathologies were diagnosed in 6 patients, of which 2 were male and 4 were female. Perforation and obstruction was suspected in one and two patients respectively of male. Pelvic pathologies in female were suspected in four, 14 patients. Miscellaneous conditions were diagnosed in four, patient, four female patients. Of the pelvic pathologies that were diagnosed, the most common cause was ovarian torsion seen in five female, followed by ruptured ectopic pregnancy in four, Three of them had endometrioma or chocolate cyst. One patient was diagnosed with adenomyosis and one patient had pelvic inflammatory disease. All these diagnoses were later confirmed postoperatively also. 
miscellaneous the four miscellaneous cases seen were one was of obstructed hemi vagina and its lateral renal age and syndrome second was uh, enteritis due to ascariasis worm infestation another patient was diagnosed with superior mesenteric artery thrombosis on ultrasound thrombus ecogenic thrombus was seen in superior mesenteric artery and fourth diverticulitis results and interpretation of the 15 cases which were diagnosed as acute pancreatitis had final diagnosis as pancreatitis hence ultrasound had 100% sensitivity and specificity appendicitis was diagnosed ultrasound through ultrasound in 17 patients which was post operatively confirmed hence the sensitivity and specificity was 100% Cholelithiasis, liver abscess also had a sensitivity and specificity of ultrasound diagnosis as 100%. Of 15 patients who were diagnosed with renal calculus, only 14 had renal calculus on CT. Hence, sensitivity of USG diagnosis was 93% and specificity was 98%. Perforation and obstruction were had 100% sensitivity and specificity on USG diagnosis. Bowel pathologies were diagnosed in six patients through ultrasound, but were seen only in five patients in multi-detector CT. Hence, it had a sensitivity of 83%. Neoplasm and pelvic pathologies were diagnosed 100% on ultrasound and had a sensitivity and specificity of 100%. Miscellaneous cases had a sensitivity of ultrasound diagnosis, which is 57, 75%. Overall diagnostic accuracy of ultrasonography in acute abdominal conditions. In this study, ultrasonography was diagnostic in 75% of patients. Three patients were misdiagnosed. And in 32 patients, other diagnosed other diagnostic investigations like multi-detector CT or MRI or tumor markers were required for confirmation of diagnosis. Discussion. According to the above results, ultrasonography is highly sensitive and specific for diagnosis of prevalent pathologies of acute abdominal conditions and almost gold standard in cases of acute pancreatitis, appendicitis, cholelithiasis, liver abscess, perforation, obstruction, neoplastic etiologies, and pelvic pathologies. Ultrasonography is highly accurate in gallbladder condition, especially diagnosis of cholecystitis associated with cholelithiasis. Ultrasound is found superior to multi-detector CT in quick and accurate diagnosis of acute pelvic pathologies due to the availability of transvaginal imaging option. Ultrasound should easily could easily visualize intraluminal structures like mobile worms due to dynamic imaging. In mesenteric lymphadenitis, ultrasonography accurately diagnosed the condition and all the patients were managed conservatively. In appendicitis, it gave an accurate diagnosis in all cases. The sensitivity and specificity of ultrasonography in diagnosing pancreatic conditions is 100%. One patient was misdiagnosed with renal calculus due to the presence of renal medullary sinus fat artifact and patient body habitus. Presence of diverticulitis was better seen on multi-detector CT due to its location from posterior wall of sigmoid colon and hence missed on sonograph. In one patient, non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia, NOMI, diagnosis was made on multi-detector CT but was not well appreciable on sonography due to patient's body habitus. Conclusion The result of this study demonstrates the usefulness of emergency ultrasonography in acute abdominal condition involving various organ systems and associated pathologies. In majority of the systems, ultrasonography is highly accurate and definite. Diagnosis could be made. Ultrasonography is cheap, non-invasive, reliable, simple to perform, has no contraindications and can be repeated as and when required. It also allows complete portability so that studies can easily be carried out at the bedside in the emergency room in case of critically ill patients and even in operating room. It helps in showing organ specific lesions and its accurate measurement which is helpful in follow and response to treatment. Ultrasonography is also helpful in diagnosing alternate diseases 
and to reduce negative laparotomy rate. Thank you. These are my references.